Hey guys, welcome back to video two. Today we're going to be going over the fundamentals of the efficient frontier. So what is the efficient frontier? The efficient frontier is the efficient set of optimal portfolios given the same views on risk and return from every investor. So everyone lies somewhere on the efficient frontier, but where they lie, it depends on the individual's risk aversion. And it's also important to note that these results are true within the sample, meaning that these portfolios are ex post efficient and we're able to optimize them after the sample period has finished. Okay, so let's start with some mathematics behind an important portfolio on the frontier, the global minimum variance portfolio, or the global MVP as we call it, is exactly what the name implies. It's just a portfolio with the lowest variance given our universe of investments. So mathematically, this can be represented as a transposed vector of weights multiplied by the covariance matrix multiplied by a vector of weights is subject to the weights or the vector of weights equaling one. And don't worry about this constraint right now because this isn't relevant to a, a global minimum variance portfolio. So the next thing we can do is form the Lagrangian function and take the first order conditions. So we're taking the first order conditions with respect to W and lambda one. And once we solve out these first order conditions and set them equal to zero, again, don't worry about this third order conditions. It's relevant for a separate portfolio on our frontier. But once we solve those first two first order conditions, we set them equal to zero and we can solve out for the optimal W star or the optimal vector of weights that's going to minimize our variance in the portfolio. And so we'll skip some of the mathematics here, but that's ultimately going to give us this equation down here that's pretty much just saying that the optimal weight of a minimum variance portfolio is proportionate to the inverse of the covariance matrix. So the next step is we need to return to Python and code in the optimal vector of weights as well as the mean and the standard deviation of our minimum variance portfolio. Okay, we're back in Python and we need to calculate the frontier quantities. So we're going to start by calculating the covariance matrix and we'll use the numpy.cov function we're just going to subset it for our 47 industries, so call them 1 to 48. And then we want to set our row variables equal to false because the variables are found in the columns of our data set. And next, we need to annualize the covariance matrices. So we just simply multiply it by the number of trading days per year. And then finally, for our optimization, we need to invert the covariance matrices. So we're going to use the numpy.linearalgebra.inverse function. And then just we're just simply going to put in the covariance matrix to invert it. And then finally, we need a vector of ones equal to the number of industries we have. So we'll use the numpy.ones function and then just set it equal to 47. We review the PowerPoint. Literally, all we're doing is coding in these four variables and then using them to calculate the optimal weights. And then from that, the opt or the mean and standard deviation of the minimum variance portfolio. So we're going to start by assigning the variable AA is equal to a numpy sum. And the sum is the inverted covariance matrix. And then for the variable BB, we're going to set that equal to a transposed vector of returns from our 47 industries multiplied by the inverse of the covariance matrix multiplied by a vector of ones. And the calculation for the variable CC is very similar. Again, it's just a transposed vector of returns from the 47 industries multiplied by the inverted covariance matrix. And there's a missing at sign here. Just remember to add that and then multiplied by that same vector of returns from the 47 industries. And then our delta is going to be set equal to just simply AA times CC and then minus BB squared. So now we have all the four variables we need to calculate the optimal vector of weights for our MVP. We're going to start our global MVP calculation by calculating the optimal vector of weights. Which we're just using the equations from the PowerPoint. So it's the inverse of the covariance matrix multiplied by a vector of ones divided by the variable AA. And again, these weights are just proportional to the inverse of the covariance matrix. Now we're going to calculate the average return of this global MVP, which is just the variable BB divided by AA. And you can see that the MVP has returned 11.4% annually for our sample period. Now to calculate the standard deviation, it's just the square root of one divided by AA, and it should return a pretty low standard deviation. So let's just populate this, and you can see the standard deviation. Before we get into data visualization and plotting our portfolios, we first need to actually build the frontier. So we're going to set the variable mu front 
equal to a numpy.linspace function is essentially going to allow us to create a sequence. Sequence will be from our minimum variance portfolios return to the maximum return of the 47 industries from our sample data. And you can see that it starts from the MVP's return and goes all the way up to the highest return from the 47 industries. Now for the standard deviation, we're going to get into the mathematics of this in the next video. So you're going to have to take my faith for it now. But essentially, lambdas are linear in the return of the portfolio. So the variance has to be quadratic in the portfolio's return. And so this is just an, a quadratic equation representing the standard deviation of the portfolio as a function of the efficient frontiers mu return. And we're taking the square root of that and then divide it by the square root of delta. And when we populate this, you can see the standard deviation starts from the standard deviation of the MVP portfolio and goes all the way up to 14%. Now calculated sample statistics for our efficient frontier, two unoptimized portfolios, one optimized portfolio in our 47 industries. But what does it really all mean? All we did was punch a bunch of code into Python and haven't really analyzed it. So the next step is to import matplotlib as PLT, and we're going to start plotting these portfolios in the frontier. So the first task is we're going to use plt.plot to plot the efficient frontier. And this is on an XY basis, so the standard deviation is going to go first, followed by the return of the re frontier. And you can see that it, it populates quite a pretty line. The next step is to plot the, the three portfolios. So we're going to plot the minimum variance portfolio, the equally weighted, and the market portfolio. So we're going to use the, the plt.scatter function, and we're going to combine them all into one vector, or the standard deviations into one vector, and we're going to plot them against the returns of those three portfolios in a separate vector. And then we'll color these red, and you can see that when we execute this code, There'll be three portfolios plotted, but we really don't know which one is which. So the next step is to add text. We're now going to add text to our minimum variance portfolio using the plt.text function. And then again, it's on an XY basis. So we'll put the standard deviation first, shifting it by 0 0.05. And then we'll put in the return on the Y basis, shifting it by 0.3. And then the actual text we want to write down is the MVP. So if we execute that, we can see that the portfolio has been added and the process is the same for the other two portfolios as well. I've gone ahead and added text to the other two portfolios and I've also plotted the risk and return for the 47 industries during our sample period. So the last step is to add labels and a title. So we're going to start with the x axis by using the plt.x label function and we'll call this the standard deviation. And then for the Y axis, it's the same thing. We're using the PLT dot Y label. And for the Y label, it's the mean. So let's just call this annualized excess return. And finally, for a title, we're using the PLT dot title. These are pretty intuitive functions. And for the title, let's call this industries, uh, the market and the frontier. And then we want to add a second line to this title. So we're going to do that by using a backslash and then N and then the second line of our title is going to be our sample period, which is from 2009 to 2013. So if we execute this code, just give me one second. If we execute this code, we should be able to see, yeah, we have a title with two lines as well as an X label and a Y label. 